It is great to be live again at Ignite to give our annual update on modern threat protection and the progress that we've made. I'm Rob Lefferts. I lead the teams for Microsoft Sentinel and Microsoft Defender. And the teams have been delivering a lot of innovation. There's a lot coming. Big news. So let's dive right in. As we reflect over the last 12 months, it is clear that attackers have not been resting on their laurels. They are constantly more bold, more sophisticated, and more capable. And what we see them doing is moving on beyond traditional endpoint exploitation and lateral movement, thinking about how they can work across cloud and on-prem installations, and targeting cloud architecture using OAuth app permissions to break in. And in fact, what we now see is of the ransomware that's hitting organizations, 60% of it is actually using remote encryption. So process-based uh, protections are not actually going to be effective in remediating that. And that's even without thinking about the next steps around data exfiltration and theft and collateral damage along the way. In fact, I'd like to give a little shout out and congratulations on the progress that we've made it in community and rolling out MFA and providing better protection against phishing attacks. It's great that we've done that. And of course, attackers have responded. They've built out adversary in the middle infrastructure to circumvent organizations that don't yet have fish resistant credentials put in place like FIDO2 keys. And then finally, they're moving to more cloud to cloud, stealing resources from one cloud, information, assets, and, and credentials to use those to log into other clouds. And then moving inside of the cloud infrastructure for a company, never even touching the on-prem infra. Now the question is, what do defenders get to do in the face of this? And the truth is, as I talk to CISOs and security teams around the world, they're just juggling too much stuff. 50 plus tools in the average SOC. And they're exploring entities, looking for data, pivoting through information, jumping from one tool to the next, sometimes spending weeks and days to put together a comprehensive picture. And then when the analyst is done with that, well, it's time to go write a report and explain all of that to the board or somebody even outside the security team. And this is just fatiguing, and it isn't working. It's showing gaps. Take a look at ransomware. This is a 15-year-old problem that the industry is facing. And in order to be effective in protecting against that, SOCs have to use more than a dozen different tools to put together this patchwork of views of what attackers might have done inside of their organization. It's this siloed approach that's leaving gaps and delaying the effectiveness of detection and response. Wouldn't it be better to take all of those tools and frameworks, workflows, and capabilities and put them together into a unified SOC operations platform? We agree, and that's exactly what we've been building. It starts on a foundation of global threat intelligence the industry's broadest view of the threat landscape, built by human researchers and AI pouring over 65 trillion signals a day and building a deep understanding of the entire threat landscape, and then using that to build out a view of what are attackers doing? What are the techniques? What are their objectives? How are they getting into organizations? And turning that into out-of-box, real-world detections that help protect you. On top of that, my favorite attack, I say it again and again, is the attack that doesn't work to begin with because the environment is hardened. And so we work on a posture layer that has controls across the estate to make sure that you can harden that environment and have visibility into what hardening needs to be done. But it's not just passive, also an active analysis of incidents and attack paths, evaluating how could attackers get in from breach points into critical assets and helping to you to prioritize those gaps and even helping you to fix it with simple instructions and even one-click turn-on capabilities. On top of that, post-breach, threat detection and response, combined with the depth of XDR and the breadth of SIM to pull in information from your entire organization giving you unparalleled visibility and holistic response across the entire kill chain, pulling together multiple layers of security and security domains. And finally, topping it off with cybersecurity-specific 
AI. Automation to disrupt attacks and save the SOC analyst time. Guided tools to help make recommendations to analysts about how to progress the investigation and to cut down tasks, things that would have taken hours down into minutes and seconds. And starting today, even pushing further, let's start to mislead the attackers and send them down the wrong path, wasting their time and giving us high valuable, high quality signal about what they're doing. Our vision behind this is around two core pillars, proactive protection and supercharging the analyst experience. It begins with really, let's block everything that we can. Let's harden the environment, let's prevent things, let's block attacks as they happen, and let's have automated tools that go in and disrupt and remediate attacks as they're going on, and make sure that that actually happens at machine speed, which is the world in which you need to defend today. And then on top of that, drive increased analyst productivity. Let's build a delightful experience that they love to work in, that actually helps them find the next thing to go do, streamlines their experience and their workflows, and really turns analysts into heroes, making them effective at saving their organizations. We need to give them the right information at the right time and the right recommendations about that next step in getting ahead of the attackers. All built on a foundation of generative AI. We are constantly learning how we can use Generative AI to com translate complex situations, code, and an environment into simple instructions, helpful guidance for the SOC, and really helping to fine to the SOC, its operations, and its defense. So analysts will actually soon be able to experience this vision for themselves. It comes together in the new unified experience, bringing together the power of Microsoft Sentinel and Microsoft Defender into one user experience and one canvas. And let's actually take a look at this big picture, play the video. Working with a wide range of different tools presents security operations teams with a wide range of challenges, dispersed insights, multiple workflows, different levels of integrations, and training a team on a variety of systems. It's time for a unified, intelligent, and comprehensive security operations platform for end-to-end -end threat detection, investigation, and response. Now, Microsoft Defender XDR, Microsoft Sentinel, and Microsoft Security Copilot are available as a unified experience. All your alerts, incidents, playbooks, and policies in one place with more AI, more automation, and an unparalleled view of emerging threats enriching it all. One place to manage defenses. A single portal for your threat investigation, detection, and response. A single command center built on a common data model to help you manage your SOC and work faster. One place to investigate your incidents, making incident triage more straightforward, investigation more seamless, and insights more holistic. And one place to search and hunt for threats across all your data, simplified with help from Security Copilot, translating natural language to KQL. SIM and XDR are truly better together with more comprehensive features like attack disruption, which now extends from XDR to some data from the SIM, containing attacks quicker. Are you ready for the most optimized security operations experience yet? I'm excited about that. I want you to have that. I want your analysts to be able to experience that. Uh, and actually, I'd love for us to dig in and actually see what it looks like firsthand. So I'd like to bring my colleague, Preeti, product manager on the Sentinel team, to get on stage and give you a demo of this new experience. Thanks, Preeti. Let's take a look. Thank you, Rob. With that, uh, Rob set up the context in terms of what the unified security operations platform is all about. Let's take a look at, uh, drill into this. Um, once you go through a couple of steps of onboarding, which is a very quick guided experience, you would see your Microsoft Sentinel workspace in the Defender portal, along with your Defender XGR experiences here, in the same pane of glass. The entire experiences of Sentinel is available out here in the Defender portal for you to access. At the same time, you can also have the capability to optimize your data out here as well which means you can get maximum security value for the data you have ingested in your seam, along with also getting 
data cost optimizations too. The third part is all about unified incidents and we'll be drilling into that shortly. Along with all of this, you can also see uh, all, all these capabilities that Sentinel has available as, uh, in the homepage too, which is automation capabilities and data connector health as well. Let's take a look at our unified incidents. This takes us to our unified incidents queue for Sentinel as well as Defender XTR. And out here, you can see the, uh, the incidents have been like, it's a one comprehensive incident across Defender XDR and Microsoft Sentinel. So you're not going to go to two different queues to investigate two different incidents and correlate those. It's all done for you. The second thing out here is Microsoft Defender for Cloud incidents are also showing up in the same, in the same queue. The third part that we also want to call out here is attack disruption. Attack disruption is a Microsoft Defender XTR capability where a threat can be contained before it becomes an attack. And this has been extended out to Sentinel data, which is mostly the non-Microsoft data as well, which is like expanding your digital coverage and with automated response scenarios. With that, drilling into this incident gets us to a complete view of your incident and uh, along with the timeline of your alerts that is portrayed here. So all the alerts that contributed to this incident is there. Along with that, we can also see Security Copilot making SOC smarter out here in terms of getting all the insights directly. In this case, Jonathan Walcott is uh, the compromise user where um, they received a phishing email and uh, they clicked the URL and the attacker was able to uh, sign in and get some files. Now, investigating this further, let, like, there is a lot of guided, experience, guided context out here that um, Copilot presents to investigate this further. Since this is a multi-stage financial uh, fraud attack, we are going to classify this as such and, um, and see that this, this attack has already been contained before the attacker could do more harm, which is a cool thing. Let's get into the investigation capability that takes us to the unified advanced hunting, which now operates across Defender XDR and Sentinel data in the same view. So how cool is that? You have the same query now operating across these data sets and uh, in a unified manner, instead of hunters having to go to two different portals and piecing the uh, scenario together. We can also see Copilot is generating all the queries, and these are actually, uh, you don't have to need to know KQL now, and I'm getting prompted to even like go ahead in my investigation journey. In this case, I would like to scope my investigation to just the, the, the successful connections. And Copilot just writes the query for me, thanks to natural language to KQL conversion. Thanks very much. All right, one of the most important things, actually, take a moment and celebrate it being demos. Yay, isn't it wonderful? Uh, so one of the most important things that we do uh, when we design our products is we work closely with customers to ensure that what we're building is actually useful. Uh, so what I'd like to actually do now is take a pause and hear from one of our customers who was our close design partner. This is Yaron at Wartel on how this new experience already led to some major productivity improvements in his organization. Play the video. The unified experience changed our day-to-day -day operations by a lot. Having the ability to use both Microsoft 365 Defender and Sentinel data at the same place and having a single pane of glass without additional complexity or overhead is a huge step forward for detection purposes and incident investigation. I think the most valuable part of the unified experience is the ability to query data from Microsoft Sentinel and Microsoft 365 Defender from within a single query. This allows us to build use cases in a simple way, which were very hard to build before the unification. I think the unified experience will save us a lot of time. What I'm really excited about is that we have access to multiple security products from the same portal. Before, when we had to do an incident investigation, we need to switch between portals by a lot. We now have an integrated solution where we can do the full 
incident investigation experience. This will make us run our process much more efficient. What most surprised me is how fast we can create use cases that uses data from both Sentinel and Microsoft 365 Defender. While also decreasing the complexity of our use case. That's a huge step forward. Awesome. And that's actually the point. Let's make sure that the analysts have a better experience and the organization is more effective at protecting itself. And it's not just from Ortel. We get it from a wide variety of customers who've been in our design partnership with a real focus on the new power we're delivering and the details of how it works designed to delight and empower defenders. We've got more quotes here. We're looking forward to getting more from you. Now, security is a game of big data. Defenders want full visibility on everything that's going on. They want to know the stuff that matters, when it matters. But that costs money to store and process all that information. So you want to make sure you're focused on what is the part that will bring the most security value. Our theme with SOC optimization is quite straightforward. I would like to save you money so that you can make sure that all the data that matters the most for your security value is there when you need it. Get the most out of your data. Adjust the settings. Improve coverage. Fine tune the experience. And this stance is deliberately different. We are in the industry taking a lead to say, let's make sure we're actively helping you reduce your ingestion costs so you can ensure that you have the data that you need ingested into the SIM. And then in the spirit of customers guiding us, let's hear from the Peel School Board and listen to Mark in his own words talk about how this has helped them. Play the video. Another noteworthy feature is SOC optimization, which provides valuable insights into our log ingestion and how to optimize it effectively. It offers recommendations in a user-friendly card format, summarizing the usage and value of specific tables and suggesting actionable steps. This feature also allows us to monitor metrics related to ingested data, the optimization status of ongoing or completed tasks, as well as active items. We are optimistic that this feature will significantly contribute to optimizing our log ingestion, ultimately resulting in cost savings in the future. All right, now there's a lot of things that we've covered about how we're bringing unified SIM plus XDR together. Uh, but one of the specific callouts that I want to make sure you understand is we're also pulling cloud infrastructure and the threat alerts from that cloud workload into a full end-to-end -end view. And because Defender for Cloud is inherently cross-cloud, this works across Azure, AWS, and GCP and is part of that unified XDR. So let me give you a view of what this actually means. So this is a timeline of an incident that happened. And many of the things across the bottom, Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Identity, Defender XDR, are showing how that progressed across elements of the XDR, but now integrated into that same view is what happened inside of the cloud infrastructure at the same time. And today, we're excited to announce that we're bringing this capability directly to our XDR customers. And I'm excited about this broader view. In fact, with these multi-cloud security signals, the name Microsoft 365 Defender doesn't really seem to fit anymore what we're talking about. I'd like to introduce the new name, Microsoft Defender XDR. It's simpler, it's clearer, and it conveys best of depth understanding across Microsoft 365 Cloud and beyond in one single XDR. And Microsoft Defender XDR is the industry's broadest native XDR. It's got coverage across the entire kill chain, covering most of the vast majority of today's attacks in one single XDR canvas. And in fact, this holistic approach has enabled Microsoft XDR to achieve 100% visibility and threat protection with zero delays in the most recent MITRE Ingenuity attack evaluation delivering industry-leading results for the fifth consecutive year, or every time MITRE has happened. Now, I talked earlier about the importance of great security posture, but we all know that attacks and breaches will happen, and detection and response needs to happen in real time. That makes the difference between, yep, 
we reset a user's password and everything was okay, versus, oh no, we had a terrible emotional experience and there's news headlines about everything that went wrong. Let's make sure we're over here. And as we think about how that happens, ransomware continues to be a major threat driving all of this. In fact, according to our data, the number of ransomware attacks has tripled just in the past year. And the transition is interesting. It's moving downstream to organizations that are less prepared. 70% of all successful attacks went after organizations of fewer than 500 employees in the last year. And they can move fast. In our most uh, current analysis, we see five minutes after initial exploitation before attackers are ready to start doing lateral movement. And the entire attack chain can happen in less than two hours. What this means for you is that it's no longer a question of like, how do I manage my alert queue? It has now become a question of how does the system work? How can I enable all these components to work together so I can be as fast as the attackers are? In fact, faster. In short, for the most aggressive attacks, if you're waiting for a human defender to take an action, you could very well be waiting too long. And as a result, we need to make sure we provide full eradication, and get rid of the siloed tools that we've been talking about before. So last year, we announced an industry first around automated defense against in-progress ransomware attacks. This is automated attack disruption, defending at machine speed using the full power of XDR. And it's disrupting before damage happens. In fact, our average disruption time is only three minutes which is critically important when you think about the times we were talking about before. It's a serious game changer that tilts the board to the advantage of the defenders. And we keep adding new capability to it, business email compromise, adversary in the middle protection, and now it extends out past our XDR and helps protect SAP business applications because we've brought SIM plus XDR together. So it's not just what we've got in M365 Defender, but by bringing Sentinel in, we can now extend out to protect the SAP business application with the SAP solution for Sentinel. This is just the beginning. We will keep looking for new kinds of automated attack disruption we can include with Defender XDR in order to better protect you. Now, taking it even further and talking about how we can move left and disrupt attacks earlier in the kill chain, we can detect compromised users and essentially package them in bubble wrap so they can't get anywhere, blocking lateral movement. Last year, we actually quietly turned this on, and we have amazing stories of how we're protecting people. In August, we automatically protected a medical research lab save, that was working on saving lives. We saved millions of dollars. Attack disruption saved them. We have saved over 3,000 attacks across 1,400 unique customers making a real difference today. And the beauty of this is we turned it on by default for you. Roll out Microsoft Defender for your endpoints and all the endpoints that are covered get protected with this capability. And the more Defender products you roll out, the better they integrate together in Defender XDR to provide more comprehensive automated attack disruption. In fact, there's a detailed session right here, right after this one, where we'll be going into the details of it. At the same time, we keep pushing. How do we get more high confidence signals? Today, I am thrilled to announce deception. This is using AI to generate realistic decoys and lures to confuse attackers into going after the wrong thing, protecting your assets, and thereby making sure you can detect them. It's beyond simple honeypots. It's tailored to your environment. And again, it happens automatically once you turn it on because it's integrated into Defender for Endpoints. No additional setup is required. This is another industry first, making it the easiest way to get a deception solution turned on in your environment. And with that, I'd like to invite Paul, product manager for the Defender for Endpoint team, to come up and show us what this looks like. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Rob. All right, so what we're looking at here is the incidence queue that you've seen a couple of times during this session already. Um, <clears throat> we've also discussed the concept of attack disruption. What we haven't yet touched on is how we can apply containment to further limit the possibilities of an attacker as they're performing the attack. Now, on screen, on the first incident, if we click down into that, 
you'll see that this involves a multi-stage incident. It's an, a lot of things going on here. So on the right side, you'll see kind of the summary of the attack. And then on the left side, <clears throat> if we close this flyout, we will actually be able to see kind of the overview uh, page of uh, the attack story. Now on the right side, Security Copilot is actually trying to steal my thunder because it does way too good a job at summarizing what happened here, so don't read it. Just listen to me. <laughs> on, the, on the left side, uh, you'll see the active alerts. Now, if we scroll down on the left side through these alerts, at some point we'll see lateral movement, and then when we pause here, deceptive credentials were used from a possibly compromised device. This tells me that the attacker actually landed on a box, tried to interact with memory, with uh, pulling from Active Directory, came across some interesting looking credentials and tried to use them. Now, as the attack progresses, they attempt to deploy their ransomware, but we're onto them. Okay, so if we scroll down all the way to the bottom here, we'll be able to observe that um, a remote desktop connection was blocked. Now that's kind of the final game over moment for this attacker. What happened behind the scenes, we were able to collect all the signals that were needed to incriminate the attacker's device, which was not onboarded to Defender for Endpoint, the attacker's accounts, the real ones and the fake ones, and then we shut it down. Using containment, we were able to effectively stop all connections from that user account, stop, stop all connections to and from the machine that they were using. And the reason we were able to be this confident about being able to shut it down, aside from the signals of the actual attacks and the actual techniques that were used, is that they also touched on our decoys. And as Rob mentioned, these decoys are very, very convincing. In fact, as they're doing their credential dump, we will automatically inject very convincing credentials that look exactly real. These are automatically generated by our AI to look exactly like any other account in the environment without actually polluting your environment with these fake objects. Now, if we pivot into the viewpoint of the adversary, we're gonna run a little attack video and I'm going to narrate and tell you behind the scenes what the attacker is doing and at which point we actually um, allow this functionality to work. So cue the video. So here our attacker is trying to remote into a machine using a domain admin account, Alice, that they actually found on the initial access machine. So they have a machine that is not onboarded. Now they're remoting into an actually Defender for Endpoint onboarded machine. This is where they start doing the additional reconnaissance. As you can see, they're running a script. The script is being used to extract users using LDAP queries. The next thing they do, they'll do a process memory dump of LSAS. Finally, they exfiltrate the data they just collected to their working machine, use Mimikatz, and find some really, really cool credentials. What they don't know is that these are fake. They appear very real, but they're not. So as they try to use these credentials to execute the next stage of their attack and to obtain and remain persistent, to execute their ransomware payloads, they are shut down. And in fact, the credentials didn't work. They're not real. At this point in time, we are pretty confident that this attack should be shut down and it's game over for the attacker. Thank you. That's awesome. I hope you're all looking forward to trying that out in your environment. We are incredibly excited about it. Uh, there is a ton of other stuff. I can't go through it all. I would love to. We have posted a full description up to ak.ms slash mdeignite2023. 
some of the things we've done here are not just about the amazing, cool, sexy deception and attack containment and disruption, but about making it more in, easy to use, easy to deploy, improving the management capabilities, supporting Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, and overall making sure the system is more robust and easier to use in your environment. Please take a look at all the things we've done there. The team is incredibly excited. With that, I want to pivot to cloud security. Cloud attacks are increasing, and unfortunately, we're seeing them more and more in the news. In fact, when I talk to CISOs, I frequently hear the refrain of, there's just too many cloud resources to protect. I don't understand them, and I don't have the time to go protect every single one of those. The pace of innovation in the cloud keeps increasing, and that keeps driving up the risks. It creates this race for security and compliance teams to safeguard all the identities, devices, data, and applications that they have, and even figure out what all of that stuff is. So more and more, cloud security is crucial. First, we have to find those critical resources spread across public clouds and on-prem infrastructure. Second, all of the innovation drives more and more security holes and more risk. And finally, it's just a, you know, Sometimes they say less and more, less is more, like more is more. More assets, more resources, more surface area, more risk, more work for defenders in order to be able to protect themselves. And in the face of this, security admins really need to have this comprehensive visibility, controls, dedication, detection response across all the environments that they work in. And we've already talked about how that works in a unified threat protection system, but now let's shift to left of boom, let's talk about how we innovate in cloud security posture management. There's a lot coming. First, Defender for Cloud is now integrating with Microsoft Entra permissions management, providing controls for least privilege access, providing actionable recommendations about how to protect your environment, and of course, working in a multi-cloud environment across Azure, GCP, and AWS. But it is not enough to just have a long list of controls. We, last year, we announced attack path analysis to help cut through the noise, tell you what actually mattered an attacker could actually get to. We have revamped that and mapped it onto the MITRE framework to make it easier to understand. And we keep extending our attack paths broader and broader. For example, providing analysis of lateral movement across multiple clouds. Perhaps most importantly, connecting together how do the security and DevOps teams work together to give you true code to cloud protection across all major developer platforms? So you can pinpoint the source of a problem, track it through the DevOps pipeline, and expedite remediation that takes care of it comprehensively and at the source. And this is great to look at. So with that, I'd like to call Karen, product manager for the Defender for Cloud team up to show us these new capabilities in action. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Rob. All right, let's get started on the Defender for Cloud overview page. So as a security admin, I get critical insights into my security configuration, vulnerability, and risk across all my cloud deployments in Azure, AWS, GCP, and hybrid environments. As Rob alluded to earlier, it's not just enough to find all the cloud misconfiguration. I need help in pinpointing which of these is going to have the most impact and how do I remediate these issues, even in code? So let's take a look at some of our latest innovations. They're gonna help you predict and prevent future cloud attacks. So heading over to the attack path analysis tab, I can take a look at potential attack paths that are automatically generated for me. This view is helping me prioritize the most critical risk based on exploitability, lateral movement, business risk, and other contextual factors. Now, taking a closer look at this specific, specific example, our engine has identified impacts multiple clouds and sensitive data. Here, I get a description about the potential attack path story and MITRE attack mapping outlining potential impact, affected resource types, and applicable risk factors. In this case, I have sensitive data, internet exposure, and lateral movement. Now, let's dig into this security risk. I can see that a starting point is an internet exposed Google Cloud Compute instance with high severity vulnerabilities and ultimately gains access to an AWS S3 bucket that's storing sensitive information. 
Here, the Google Cloud Compute instance is storing an AWS access key that can authenticate it as an AWS user. So this is concerning on its own, but we also see this user has permissions to an AWS S3 bucket that's storing sensitive information. So this means if an attacker exploits the vulnerability on the VM, gains access to the secret, they can easily move laterally and access sensitive information stored in that AWS S3 bucket. So in the event of the breach to that Google Cloud Compute instance, the ripple effects extending well beyond GCP and into AWS. Now remember, all of this is helping us get in front of critical risk and prevent future attacks. So now, to mitigate this cloud risk, I can view all the relevant remediations, including recommendations to disallow public access to the VM and resolve vulnerability findings. I'm gonna select ensure that compute instances do not have a public IP address. In the recommendations page, I see clear remediation steps. I can perform these using the console or the command line. I also have this option to trigger a logic app and automatically remediate this recommendation by removing the public IP address from that compute instance. Now we just walked through an automatically generated potential attack path, but I can also create custom queries to stay on top of cloud risk that's relevant to my own environments. So let's head over to the Cloud Security Explorer. Here, I've created a specific query template. I'm looking for high severity vulnerabilities in actively running containers in internet facing pods that can be accessed by various users in the organization. By running this query, I get immediate insights. I can see not only which container images are vulnerable, but also track them back to their origins, the exact code repositories from which they were pushed and the specific workloads they're powering. In the results pane, I can click on the push run URL. This is providing me a direct link back to the container image where it was deployed from. And my, res my response can be just as immediate. I can seamlessly connect within the developer workflow, leaving a comment on the pull request to expedite remediation of the vulnerability right in code. So let's switch gears and take a look at what this experience looks like for a developer. Here, you can see Defender for Cloud has annotated this pull request providing in-context feedback about vulnerabilities that need resolution, all with developers staying in their tool chain of choice. So to recap, all these capabilities are helping me not only get in front of the most critical risk first, it's also helping me build better synergy with my developer teams for faster mitigation right in the code itself. Back to you, Rob. Awesome, thank you. Amazing capability, and the team is innovating at a blistering pace. And you probably get the idea, again, there's way too much stuff to talk about here. Instead, you can see around agentless secret scanning and Defender for APIs and a unified vulnerability assessment engine, we encourage you to go read the blog, aka.ms slash MDC Ignite2023, and learn more about everything that comes with Defender for Cloud and how that integrates into the unified security operations platform. Now, I wanna take a step back. Lots of people in the industry and competitors are acquiring bits and pieces and talking about putting those together and building out a unified security operations platform. We have been on this journey for five years and it is here today and the roadmap of capability is strong. When I talk to CISOs around the planet, I hear very clearly this tension and debate, best of suite versus best of breed. Our position is very clear. You should not have to choose. You deserve both, and the Microsoft Security Operations Platform is here to deliver that. It already leads in six Gartner Magic Quadrants and eight Forrester Waves, and paired with native integration, completeness of coverage, built-in posture management, and next-gen AI power, it delivers best-in-class protection at a lower cost across the entire tool set. With that, on behalf of Preeti, Paul, Karen, and myself, thank you for joining us. We look forward to sharing more with you. You can learn more at the expert sessions. I believe we have one coming up next door in the very next session. Thank you very much, and we look forward to your feedback and partnership. Take care.